Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, of All right. Thank you. Right. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Are we ready to start with today's lecture? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, yes. Is there any question on the work we did yesterday? Uh, yes, okay. uh, there is a question, uh, but my question is basically based on the exercise we have we were given for yesterday. So yes. from the, um, the the foundation that we laid yesterday, I realized that we were we started on a basic simplest way. But when I did the exercise, there were multiple of transactions where I will receive an instruction. And then later I I receive another instruction to save them. For an example, um, I was confused when I was doing the exercise where I received an instruction. Oh, I received 200,000. And then, but later that 200,000, I was instructed to invest it. While yeah. investing it, I received a further instruction to say I must withdraw uh, 50,000 rand and then take 30,000 rand to pay the council. So I I, yes, I, yes. I became confused after withdrawing the 50,000. I was like, okay, do I now indicate the withdrawal of the 50,000 on the credit side because it's the money going out or do I only indicate the 30,000 rand that is going to the council? So everything was flowing fine until I reached that point where I have now to withdraw and pay. I'm like, okay, do I concentrate on the payment to the council and then withdraw that, uh, uh, ignore that there was a 20,000 balance or what do I do? So that was the first confusion that I had. And then uh, the second con um, uh, confusion came when I received an amount of 400,000 and 700,000 for various clients then um, that money, obviously, I recorded uh, uh, correctly as I received it uh, on the debit side. Then there was an instruction to say I must take the 500,000 invested in terms of Section 86.3, uh, which I did. But later there was a further instruction that said I must now take 400,000 from the same person. And then that 400,000, I'm going to use it to purchase something. So I was like, OK, because now there are several uh, instructions from one person and I only received money once so it, it became very confusing so I'm not sure whether we're still going to be tackling um, several transaction or because yesterday we were only dealing with a simple transaction where we we only received money from Kokwani and obviously from Fazaya there was a further instruction to say 30,000 is going to pay ca uh, shares but now we're dealing with multiple transaction instructions basically and it became very confusing for me. I've recorded everything I did all the transaction but I was just confused to say okay if I get an instruction to say withdraw and pay do I only concentrate on the payment where I will reflect it on the credit side? And then, uh, uh, or do I also in indicate the withdrawal uh, of 50,000, both the withdrawal and the 30,000 that I will have to pay? Uh, it became very confusing for me. Thanks. Fine. Let us tackle that transaction so that um, your, your problems may be solved and it will also benefit everyone else who may have other questions on issues relating to what we dealt with yesterday. I think it will answer everybody else's question if we go to that exercise number one and treat it. Let us uh, do so. Right, does everybody have this exercise one? Yes. Fine, let's go through it. Let's go through it. Let's start it on a clean sheet. Right. Exercise one reads as follows. 
during the course of your practice, you attend to the following transactions. During the course of your practice, you attend to the following transactions. Number one, you receive 200,000 from Green to be held in trust pending the happening of a future event. What does this say to you? It says to me that I do have the 200 rand, I mean 200,000 rand, which I'm going to uh, bank on my David side for the money received, but do not do anything until I receive further instruction. Right. So in your books of account, what do you do? Um, in my books of account, I've um, obviously... Uh, I created the, the general ledger, the ledger uh, showing the money received, the debit side on the left hand side and uh, the credit side on the right hand side. Then I indicated uh, Mr. Green uh, 200,000. Then I went further to open a trust in account for, for Mr. Green, where on the credit side I reflected the trust cash book of 200,000 for him. Then uh, with the let's second instruction, it, madam, let's simplify yes. it by using the language we were using last night. It will be easier for everyone to understand. Prof, can I yes. ask something? Yes. Can it not just with due respect, can it not be a dialogue between you and the lady? Let's all get the chance to participate. You you are also allowed to participate. When I ask, I ask everyone to participate. It's just that she is first to speak. Everyone is allowed to participate because it must benefit everyone. And this is why I said, let us treat this exercise so that everyone who has a similar question may be clarified. And I ask again, Sidati, I'm seeing a hand, Sidati. No, Kese, I, knew, I wanted to comment on um, what that lady was saying just to get, yes. uh, yeah, to state what I did, because I also did the exercise. So I just wanted to put it in the words that we were speaking about yesterday. Yes. So I'm not sure if I can proceed. Please proceed. Okay, so on my side for exercise one, number one, the first thing that I did is I opened a trust cash book. Yeah. Because the instructions on the thing on the exercise says you receive 200,000 from green to be held in trust pending the happening of a future event, meaning this money is not ours. It's yes. the client's money. We haven't right. performed any service. Right. So right. I, yeah. That is so, the language I want. That is the yeah. language I want. Trust cash book. And the reason we will use the trust cash book is that the money is not ours. It still belongs to Green. And Green's instruction is that we must put the money in trust pending the, the happening of a, a future event. Not so. Yes. So we will open a trust cash book 
we will open a trust cash book and how are we going to record on the trust cash book um so can i interrupt you quickly when Please. you type trust cash book um yes. would it be easy for us to type the trust trust cash book in terms of section 82a so then we understand more the different cash books that are the, the different bank accounts that are we're going to be dealing with. So if we know that the first one is required as per section 86.2, would that be in order? Right, for as long as it is a, a trust account, we know that it is in terms of section 86.2 you have no other trust account as an attorney except in terms of section 86.2. So whether you have recorded that it is in terms of section 86.2 or not does not make any difference. You know that when you speak about a trust cash book, you'll only have just one trust cash book. The other one, will be a business cash book. But if it is easier for you, you can still say it is a trust cash book in terms of section 86.2. But um, for you to just say trust cash book is sufficient as well. Am I clarifying everyone? Thank you, yes. 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 You're welcome. So do we debit or credit? Debit. debit. We debit. We debit. And the reason we are debiting is that we are receiving the money, not so. Yes, yes. yes. money in, yes. Who's our client here? Green. It's Mr. Green. Green. And how much are we receiving? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. What else do we do after this? Well, interest system. So we, cre we credit. We credit. Uh, we, trust. Op we open. What is the trust? We open. We credit. We, we credit a, a GL. General ledger for green. We open an account for for green in trust. Which account we are going to to credit, not sir? Yes. Open an account for green in trust, and we are going to credit this account, and our narration will be trust cash book, and the amount is. 200,000. So this way, we have complied with Sorry, one bro. part of the instruction. Sorry, bro. Yes. By the way, you said that the green in, in trust, it's, it's a general ledger. It's a GL. Hello. Is it a general ledger? Yes, it's a ledger. Right. But don't write general ledger. Please right. write as we do here now. Okay. <laughs> let us let, let, listen to this. Let Sorry, us sir. Not, let Sorry, us sir. Not, yes. Sorry, so can everyone please mute because the, there's background noise. Yes, please mute and speak only when you have to. I wanted to say that. So that um, unless it relates to what we are dealing with here, we don't hear. All right. So after debiting the trust cash book, we will open an account for green in trust, which we have done here, and credit green in trust. Are we all fine with this? Yes. Yes. 
is so this way we have we have attended to the first part of the instruction in one now the further instruction in one says you are authorized to invest the money on his behalf at bank a do you see that yes yes what type of investment is this how do we deal with this section 86 for investment we open okay. an investment account in terms of section 86 oh. you have to first show that the money is going out from the trust cash book then we open a section 86 for uh investment account yeah. The interest will be split 70, um, 95%, 95%. Yeah. You credit the, the trust cash book. So we will credit the trust cash book to show that money is going out, not so. And we will say investment on behalf of green green and how much are we investing 200,000 200,000 200,000 so we credit the trust cash book and say investment on behalf of green 200,000 from there where do we go Ledger. Open investment Open account. account ledger for the investment. Yes. Oh, yeah. We yeah. open an account for investment. The banking. And we say here investment in terms of section 86. Is it four or three? Four. 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 Why four? Because, because we're given an instruction. Because it's an, it's an instruction from Gray. Authorized. Because which bank are we investing? Of the kind. Bank, bank. We are investing with Bank A. Not so. Yes. Correct. So our heading will say investment in terms of section 86 for on behalf of green at bank A. And we debit this investment account. And our narration will be trust cash book. And the amount is 200,000. Does everybody get this? Okay, sir. So, yes. so we don't debit the green interest. We open no. the investment uh, ledger. Like we did yesterday, yes. Okay. We do not debit green. Instead, we open an investment account. Sorry, sir. And uh, yes. I just want to confirm. Can you said you allow this is the only time that we, we open an invest a separate investment account when we are yeah. dealing with section. I just want to confirm, I heard you yesterday saying that this is the only time where we open an investment account, like a separate investment account when we are dealing with Section 86.4. Am I right? Is my... Let me clarify it. This is what I wanted to clarify okay. or to repeat what I said last night. I said to you last night that this is the only time when you will receive, I mean, when you will open a new account after using clients money the only time you will open a new account to debit after the clients money has been taken out of the trust cash book is when you invest because when investing you will open an investment account 
But in every other case, when client's money is used, you will credit the trust cash book and debit the relevant client. But when you are investing, you will open a new account for investment and debit it. Is it making sense? Yes, it is. A yes, sir. All right. Will one be correct? Repeat that. Can you please okay. repeat that, Prof? All right. I'm saying if you take out clients' money, let's say you are paying a disbursement or you are buying something or paying something on behalf of your client. After crediting the trust cash book, you will also debit your client. The only time you will not debit the client in trust after using their money is when you are investing. Because when you are investing, you will open a new account called investment account like we are doing now here and like we did last night we do not debit the client although it is the client's money that we are investing you do not debit the client because if you debit the client it will be as if you are either giving the money back to the client or the money is going away permanently. But with an investment, the money is not going away permanently. It is instead going into a new account known as investment. Right. So we are done with transactions listed in one. Can we go to number two? Yes, sir. In number yes, two, yes. in number two, Green later instructs you to withdraw fifty thousand and pay cancel thirty thousand. Green instructs you to withdraw fifty thousand and pay cancel thirty thousand. So the starting point will be for you to withdraw 50,000. Yes, from the investment. From the investment account. So you will credit the investment account and say trust cash book 50,000. Trust cash book 50,000. Does everybody see this? Yes, prof. So Yes, prof. You, are, you are crediting the investment account. Your narration is trust cash book 50,000. And then you go to the trust cash book because this is where the money is coming. And you say green 50,000. 50,000. So you brought back the 50,000 from the investment account to the trust cash book. Now your trust cash book has 50,000 belonging to green. And from this 50,000, it becomes possible for you to pay 30,000 to cancel. Then, how do you pay the cancel? You credit the trust cash book and you say paid cancel. Paid cancel. 30,000. You are taking money out of the trust account. So, you will credit the trust cash book. Is it 30,000 or is it 50,000? It's 30,000. Go back to number two. What does it say? 
Green later instructs you to withdraw 50,000 and pay council 30,000. So we are now paying 30,000 to council. We are done with a withdrawal of 50,000. We first withdrew 50,000 from the investment account. And now, because we have 50,000 in the trust account for green, we pay council 30,000. We credit the trust cash book and then go to green's account green. and, and debit. Our narration is trust cash book. We debit 30,000. So this way we have paid council. And please do not open a new account called council. Do not open a new account called council. No, council is not your client. You simply debit your client. And remember what I said last night and earlier and earlier today? The only time you will open a new account is when you are investing. That is the only time. That is the only time that you will open a new account after using clients' money. Otherwise, debit the client after crediting the trust cash book. Sir, so may I ask a question? Yes. It says Green later instructs you to withdraw 50,000, but he has already yes. given you 200. Why don't we withdraw then from the 200? Because nowhere it says that he gave you another 50,000. Read number one. What does number one say to you? that we received 200,000. And what did the 200,000 read? The, the last statement in number one, what does it say? You were authorized to invest the money on behalf of Bank A. And pursuing that, what did you do? Well, we did invest, obviously, the 200,000. So it means money is no longer in the trust account, not so. True. So you cannot pay from the trust account unless you withdraw from the investment account, not so. Yes, that, but that's the confusion that uh, would, wouldn't you then um, withdraw the 50,000 from the investment account? That's what we did. Because number two says, Green later instructs you to withdraw 50,000 and pay council 30,000. Oh, sorry, and what so did we do? I see that the, I see that the withdrawal at the below of the screen. Sorry, my yes. apologies. Yes. Okay, so you saw it. Yes. Sorry. Okay. All right. Thanks. My question, sir, is after crediting the investment account with the trust cash book, where we're not supposed to debit the trust cash book with the investment account instead of green. No, it's Green's money. So you are talking it? about the narration. Yes, or the narration. Where of we the... are saying Green. Yeah, well, it's Green's money that we invested here. So you can, if you, if 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 it will be easier for you, you can still say Green colon investment, fifty thousand. Oh. Oh, but okay. there is no I harm. Thinking, but the double uh -huh. entry yes i was thinking about the double sticking to the double entry principle uh yes. of after crediting uh an account then and open the, the it should be debited in the opposite account yes and and this is what we did we credited the investment account with fifty thousand and debited the trust cash book Okay, so the narration does not matter in this case. But your narration must make sense. It wouldn't make sense for us to say black, 
50,000. If we never received any money from black. Uh, okay. Do, do, do you get me? Yes, I so get green becomes relevant because it is green's money that we are dealing with here. Okay, so all right, I get it, sir. Thank you. Like for example, if you go to the investment account itself, look at the heading. What does it say? Invest Can you read the heading for me. Investment uh, section in terms of section four of no 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 please read it read it the way I wrote it uh, uh, Mana investment in terms of section eighty six subsection four of green at in, bank. on behalf of whom green green. So do you, do you understand now the relevance of writing green here? Yes, I understand the relevance so, of writing green. So this basically is green's account at the level of investment. Okay, sir. Do, do, do you get it? I, yes, sir, I get it. No, I okay. get it. I've got a question here. Yes. Okay, now that he instructed us to withdraw the 50,000, I see from the investment account, we took it out and then we debited the cash book. Yes. So now that we debited the cash book, don't we have to credit green in trust? No, it's, remember it's dual entry, not triple entry. It can't be triple. No, it's dual. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. So we are done with number two. Can we go to three? Yes. Yes. yes sir. Three says, right. You received three hundred and fifty thousand from Mrs. Purchaser, being the purchase price of a property she purchased. What do you do with this? We go into debit and trust account. Like three hundred and fifty thousand, and then we are going to credit the uh, Mrs. Uh, what do you call Mrs. Purchaser. So we record debit side of the trust cash book because we are receiving money, and our client in yes. this regard is Mrs. Purchaser, and she's giving us three hundred and fifty thousand. She's giving us three hundred and fifty thousand. So we'll open an account for her in trust. So we'll say here, Mrs. Purchaser in trust. We debit or credit, Mrs. Purchaser, in trust. Credit. 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 And our narration will be? Trust cash book. Trust cash book. Trust cash book. And the amount is? 350,000. So we are done with number three. Do you see? There's not much to be done there. Can we go to four? Yes. yes. Four says, she instructs you to invest 300,000 on her behalf at bank B. Do you get this? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. What do you do? You credit we a trust account and you open investment uh, account. Trust. 
So you'll say on the credit side of the trust cash book, investment on behalf of Mrs. Pachesa. Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. So you credit the trust cash book, and your narration is investment on behalf of Mrs. Pachesa, three hundred thousand. And then you open an investment account for Mrs. Pachesa. Investment. Uh, sorry, Prof. Yes. So, if the investment was still in the same bank, is it necessary to open another, uh, uh, or is because of the heading there? Read the heading. I, the heading will clarify you. No, I, I mean. I mean, is it necessary, if it was the same bank, Bank A, is it necessary to open another yes. uh, investment account? So because that, that is a different line. All right. Is it 86.4 or 86.3? It's 86.4. 86.4. It's 86.4. So she it's 86 four. Yes, it's an instruction. It's an instruction from the client, so it's 86 four. Yes. And how much is being invested here? 300. 300,000. With debit or credit? 300,000. Debit or credit? Debit. Yes, debit. The left, the left side. With debit, the investment account. Can we go to five now? Five says you receive various amounts totaling 700,000 from a variety of clients in trust. What do you do here? You debit trust cash book. You go to the trust cash book and debit, not so. Yes. And your narration will be, what will your narration be? Various clients. Various clients. Various clients. Various clients. You debit the trust cash book and the narration is various clients. And then you open an account for For various clients. Various clients. For various clients in in trust. In trust. In trust. Debit or credit this account. Credit. 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 We credit. And our narration is? Plus, plus cash book. Plus cash book. And the amount is? Right, can we go to the second part of the instruction? Yes. Remember, in five, you have two instructions there. Did you notice? Yes. The first yes. instruction yes. is to receive 700,000. Yes. And the second instruction says you decide to invest 500,000 yes. with Bank C. Yes. You see this? Mm -hmm. Section 86.3 is applicable. How do you record Section 86.3. Cash book, uh, you create investment. You credit the trust cash book and you say investment in terms of section 86.3, not so. 
Yes. And the amount is? 500,000. 500,000. From there, where do you go? Investment section 83. I mean 86. Is, it, is, it, is it, is it okay, sir, if we can say we go to investment in terms of um, under bank B? No, like read the instructions, ma'am. Read the instructions. Per client. You, you open investment. You bank in bank C. Bank C. Oh, yes, see. read the instruction. What does it say to you? You decide to invest 500,000 with Bank C. Bank C. Yes. Then where do you go? You open an investment account. Yes. Of section 6 Bank C. Yes. So you'll open an account and you will record that it is an investment in terms of section 86.3 at bank C. And you debit this investment account. Your narration will be trust cash book. And the amount is 500,000. This is what you are investing. Is it fun? Yes. That is for various clients, eh? No, not for various no, clients. This time. It's a section 86.3 investment. Oh, for my own. Not your it's own. It's for the LPFA. It's for I the mean LPFA. Can we go to six? Yes. yes. You receive a further 100,000 in cash from Mrs. Purchaser in respect of the pro forma costs of transfer. What do you do here? We did the, the trust, trust cash account. book. We, and you we debit with, the trust with cash. Yes. And our narration will be? Mrs. Purchaser. Mrs. Purchaser. How much? Which is 100,000. 100,000. 100,000. What else do we do? We go and open we a double open. entry. Uh, we, we already have account. an account for Mrs. Yes. Purchaser yes. in France, yes. don't we? Yes. Oh, yes. We credit Mrs. We credit again trust cash book. Yes. We credit Mrs. Mrs. Purchaser's account in trust, and the narration is trust cash book. Yes. How much? 100,000. 100,000. Yes. Can I ask, when we are now practically answering these questions, how do we number this? Do we just draw this? We don't number. We don't number. We do them as we are doing now. We don't need to number. Yes. The same way that we are answering now is how you are expected to answer in an exam situation. You don't number them. You don't say one, we do this, two, oh, we do this, three, we do this, no. I've got, as long as I've got proper headings. You do what we are doing now. Yes, okay. Exactly what we are doing now is what you are expected to do. Hmm. But sir, so for you, we receive a, a question that requires us to open a trust uh, account and later we receive another question that requires us to open a business account. So how do we handle that? You are breaking. I'm not sure what your question is. I'm saying, Can we... uh, um, what if we receive a question that requires us to open a trust book, then the next question requires us to open a business uh, book. How do we do that? We follow the same line. 
Yes, you open them, but you need to know that you've got your business set of books and your trust set of books, so you will not use the same page. Go to the next page to deal with business. Okay. Do not mix your business with your trust set of books. Yes, I know. All right. Can we go further? We do deal with trust first, then we deal with business. You will deal with them as they come. It depends on which one started. And I think it also depends on the instruction. I think the key thing here is to follow the instruction. Exactly. This is why I say you deal with them as they come. You deal with the instructions as they come. Following okay. each other or following one another. But I've seen other instructions starting with interest. Can we finish six? Yes. Yeah. Can we please finish? Right. The second part of six says you pay the transfer duty of 40,000. Do you see that? Yes. This is a disbursement. This is a disbursement. Yes. And before you pay, you must first check if your client has sufficient funds in the trust account to cover that disbursement. If your client has sufficient funds in the trust account to cover the disbursement, you will pay the disbursement from the trust account. But if your client does not have sufficient funds in the trust account to cover the disbursement, then pay the disbursement from your business account. In paying this disbursement from the business account, you are making use of your own money, which your client will reimburse later. Never pay a disbursement from the trust account when your client does not have money in trust. If you pay from the trust account in circumstances where your client has no money in trust, your trust account will run on a deficit. You are not allowed to have your trust account running on a deficit. You are not allowed. Unlike your business account, your trust account cannot have an overdraft. You can't even arrange with your bank for an overdraft facility in respect of your trust account. That you can do with your business account, but not with a trust account. Your trust account must maintain a positive balance. Is it clear for everyone? Yes, it is clear. But, yes, if, but if it happens, if it happens that you discover a deficit in the trust account, you are required to do two things. One, inform the Legal Practice Council about this deficit. Number two, rectify the deficit by transferring funds from the business account to the trust account so that your trust account can stay positive. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, Prof. So we can proceed. In our case here, Prof, but, sorry, but Prof, what, what happened? 
What happened in a situation where you just started the business and your business account is empty? Yeah, then ask your client to pay a deposit for you to work. Ask your yep. client to pay a deposit before you work to avoid situations like these. Otherwise, otherwise a presumption will be made that as a legal practitioner practicing for your own account, you will always have money in your business account. And this is why it is said that in circumstances where your client does not have funds in the trust account, you will pay from the business account using your own funds. Okay. All right. Uh, prof. Uh, prof, I wanted to ask on that matter. If, let's yes. say, you use your own money from the business account to rectify the deficit, yes. who's going to uh, reinvest you as the business owner? I've already said that your client will reimburse you later after using your money. But now how will you know which client? Because sometimes you find that you've got so many clients. What happened in the first place when the you, account is running a deficit? You have books of account. Your books of account, when properly done, will tell you that in this specific case, you paid from the trust account in circumstances where this specific client did not have funds. Remember that the law requires you to keep pro proper books of account. So every financial transaction that takes place must be recorded. So you will know which client caused this mess in trust. Unless you are not recording and you are not keeping proper books of account. Okay, thanks, Prof. Can I ask something, Prof? On the, very yeah. same, on the very same exercise on number six, you have indicated yeah. that uh, we need to establish whether the client has got enough money to pay the transfer costs. But the statement yeah. says you receive a further 100000 in cash from Ms. Pacheza in respect of the pro forma cost of transfer. Is it, yes. is, isn't it that the statement... Uh, it's explicit that there is money that is meant for the transfer of yes. the property. Yes. Yes. No, that is so. That is so, uh, Tatana. But yes, I was explaining you. a principle to you that before you pay, all the time, all the time, before you pay, first check if your client has sufficient funds in the trust account to cover the amount that needs to be paid at that moment. And if your client has sufficient funds to cover the amount of the, I mean, of the disbursement, then you can pay from the trust account. <laughs> but if your client does not have sufficient funds in trust, please, pay the disbursement from the business account. Use your own money. Oh, sorry, Prof. And now sorry. I ask, in, in sorry, this specific sorry. set of facts, sorry, from which account are we going to pay the transfer duty of 40,000? Um, can you kindly mute our mics, please? We are making it difficult for us to hear. Trust, Trust cash book. We will pay from the trust account. Why do we pay from the trust account? Because there's enough money. Because there's because money. We have money. Because we have money. And which money are we talking about? The 100,000 cash that we received from Mrs. Parchaser. So we will credit the trust cash book. Yes. And what do we say? Paid transfer duty.
If you like, you can still say paid SARS for transfer duty. Uh, Prof, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, I, I just wanted to find out if it's standard practice, a matter of principle that um, you pay on behalf of your client if they don't have money, or it's just a preference. That it says what? I'm, I'm asking if it's, it's, it's in your discretion, whether you assist your client or not, or yeah. you are bound by law to assist them if they don't have money, because I take it that you can uh, first ask that they deposit whatever is required yes. uh, before you can go to your business account. Or you of course, yes. Go, yes. So yes. if you can clarify me, is it a matter of principle that you you go to your business account before asking them if they have the funds and yeah. they can deposit, yeah. or you can just ask them to deposit whatever is required? Yes. Ju ju just as I said earlier in answering uh, one of you, you can simply ask your client to pay this money in advance because as an experienced attorney, you know what costs will be associated with the process you are embarking upon. You know that there are going to be disbursements. So you can ask your client for a deposit to be payable in advance before you undertake uh, the matter. And if your client pays that, you have no problem. But in instances where no such deposit was made and you want to pay, you want to assist the client in running the matter, you will not use the trust account. In fact, by saying pay from business, the idea here is to protect the trust account. Not that you are forced because you cannot be forced to have money when you do not have it. Do, do you follow? The idea here is to protect the trust account, to ensure that even in circumstances where you decide to be sympathetic, you cannot be sympathetic with trust funds. They are not your funds. All right. Thank you, Prof. Prof, I have a question. Yes. Uh, are you allowed to say to a client, if you pay uh, from your your business account, then uh, that will attract a certain percentage of interest because you are paying from your own money and it's their uh, it's their matter. They are the ones who should be paying for those things. Yeah, but you need to be careful that that kind of an arrangement does not end up amounting to you being a a money lender when that is not the cause of your business and you know that once you become a money lender there are other formalities that you need to comply with but now prof if let's say now by mistake you pay not by mistake actually you decided to pay for the client and you'll recover from that client. Uh, can you still now um, uh, take legal actions if that person doesn't pay you? Yes, you can. But the question is, in the beginning, although that will be another uh, legal argument, the question may also be, in the beginning, did you have instructions to even pay disbursements for the client? Did the client authorize you to pay disbursements on their behalf? Because when you issue summons against them, in their defense, they may say, I did not authorize him to pay any disbursements on my behalf. He did so at his own risk. And of course, you may also advance your own argument. And at the end, it may be a matter to be adjudicated upon by the relevant presiding officer. But there may be an argument advanced by either side. But that is outside the scope of this work all right okay so can we deal with the transfer duty that we are paying and that we credited on the transfer book where else do we deal yes, with prof. this where in else do, do we deal with this 
You debit, debit Mrs. Purchase. Purchaser. Then you debit Mrs. Purchaser in trust. Yes, and our narration is? Cash trust. Transfer duty. Trust, trust cash book. How much did we pay? 40. 40,000. 40,000. 40, so this way we paid transfer duty. Let's go to seven. Can we? Yes. Yes. You withdraw 400,000 of the investment in Bank C. You, re you receive interest of 3,500, which you pay to the beneficiary. What do we do here? You're going to credit your investment and, and debit the, what do you call those guys? Uh, various clients in trust. And then the LPHF, David. LPHF. Credit so investment. the investment in Bank C is the Section 863, not so. Yes, yes. And this is where we invested 500,000. Do you remember? Yes. It yes. Is. And how much are we withdrawing today? Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. We are withdrawing. Do you see? Yes. yes sir. Yeah. And where are we taking these two? Debit trust. Uh, debit, debit cash book. Trust book. We will debit the trust cash book. And this is the section 86.3. So we will say section 86.3 investment. It goes to the Fidelity Fund and it's um, 100%. Yes, but how much are we debiting in the trust cash book? 400,000. 400,000. 3,000. Oh. 4, 000, 3, 000. 3, 000. Yeah, but remember that you also received interest. What do you say about the interest? Plus. Can you keep quiet about them? No, the debit. 100,000 plus 95%. Could be 100% because so, it's only RPFF. So how much no, no. In total have you withdrawn from this investment account? It's um, so it will be 403,500. Not so. Yes. Although, if you like, on the debit side of the trust cash book, you can decide to say section 86.3 investment, and then you write here colon capital. 400,000 and below capital, you can write um, interest 3,500. Hello, Prof. The alternative, you can simply write the whole amount on the Hello. on the debit side as 403,500. And this will be the capital you invested plus the interest you got from the investment account. Good evening, Prof. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Yes. Yes, I'm with you, sir. Where are we? Because unfortunately, I just entered the class now. Yes. The page may be on the instruction 12 or 13 or 15 or 20, please, so, so that I can be able to be with you. What, what are you saying? I just want to find out about the page because I hear that 
we are using no, the... We are, uh, we are busy with exercise number one, which had to be done yesterday. Okay. Yes, we are busy with exercise number one, and specifically, exercise number one. we are at okay, number seven question. of exercise number one. Sorry, sir, is it, won't it be the 400,000 plus 95% of exercise the Exercise number one, number seven. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. This is section 86.3 investment. <laughs> It's different from 86.4. goes to. 100%. The whole 100% goes to. LPFF. 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 Yes. Protective fund. Yes, it will go to the legal practitioner's fidelity fund. 100% of it. Uh, sorry, Prof. Yes. Uh, Prof, we sorry. That we can um, entry um, on our trust cash book, both section 86.3 investment separately and interest. So meaning we can say section 86.3 investment 400,000. And then just right below that you enter your interest, you enter interest and which is 3.5. Yes. Okay. So In the please. alternative, you can simply say Section 86.3 investment, 403,500, just the same way we have done it here. And then you will see that the 3,500 has not been recorded anywhere else except in the trust cash book on the debit side. So it must get a corresponding credit entry. Do you see? Yes. yes. And which one will it be? Fidelity fund. It's, it's going to be LPFF. So it's we'll have to just open a account. an account for. We'll have to open an account for the LPFF. Hi, sir. Hi. I just like to ask: um, yes. Does does not, by by recording four hundred thousand and the three thousand five hundred together in the trust cash book, does that not go against the dual entry system? Because now we have three entries for for that one uh, transaction. Should we should we not split it? Um, I did hear you say earlier that we could split it if we wanted to, but leaving it the way it is now, does that not go against the dual entry uh, system? We are, we are not leaving it as is because we are going to credit the interest. Yes. Remember, this 3,500, you see 3,500, yeah. is going to be credited on the Legal Practitioner's Fidelity Fund account here. And your narration will be trust cash book. The amount is 3,500. So you will see that the credit entry on the legal practitioner's fidelity fund of 3,500 corresponds with the debit entry in the trust cash book on the investment plus capital. I mean, on the capital plus interest. So the so 3,500 has been dealt with. Hey, Prof, so Prof, so Prof sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm lost there. I'm, I'm lost. Are we not supposed now to go and remember the first thing that you did? You took the money from the investment together. It's a capital plus interest, which debited the trust account. The money comes yes. in. Then to yes. pay the... What do the LP, LPFF? Are yes. we not supposed to credit now the trust cash book and debit now the 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 LPFF? The LPFF. Yes. We will do so when we pay them, but we are not paying oh, yet. When we pay. All right. All right. Yes. Yes. Now we are simply showing that 
they are entitled to interest. Oh, it's a liability. Okay, yeah. And this is why we credited them in trust. Do you see the LPFF's account? It's credited with 3,500. Oh, yes, no, I get it now, I get it. All right, can we now pay the LPFF? Yes. We can. How do we pay them? We create the trust cash book. Trust cash. 8,500. <laughs> and we say paid LPFF. 3,500. And then we go to the LPFF's account and debit, not so. And debit from trust, yes. Debit the LPFF's account with 3,500 and the narration is trust cash book. Uh, Prof. Yes. Um, I just want to ask something. Eh? Uh, yes. When it comes to the investment, when yes. we withdraw the four hundred thousand, yes, we only withdraw the four hundred thousand, or we also include the interest on that um, ledger account. Yes, but let us deal with the interest in the in the trust cash book. Okay. Yes, although if 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 you decide to deal with the interest also in the investment accounts, we cannot penalize you because we know it is permissible, just like we did last night. Do you remember last night we first debited interest mm. in the investment account and then later withdrew the capital plus the interest? Yes. Okay, 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 one more cool, okay, one more cool. For example, and this is for illustration purposes, you may you may say here interest three thousand five hundred, and then when you come to the credit side, you credit three thousand for four hundred and three thousand five hundred like this. Is it clear for everyone? And put your entry in your trust cash book, then still remain 403,500. Yes, yes. The, the trust cash book will not change. It will still be like this, uh, 403,500. The LPFF's account will also not change. It will still re remain 3,500. So if you want to use this other method, the only changes will be on the investment account, the debiting of the interest and the withdrawal of the capital plus interest. Yeah, very, very clear, very clear. Yeah, that's why I was confused, but not good. Cool. Right. Can we go further? Yes. Number eight says you receive 100,000 in cash from white. Where do you go with this? To the trust account. To the trust debit side. To debit the trust. Debit the trust cash. Debit trust cash book, and we say white. Yes. How much? It's a hundred thousand. Hundred thousand. What else do we do? We open, open a ledger for white. White. And we open a trust ledger for white.
We have white in trust. Do we debit or credit? Credit. We credit. 100,000. And our narration will be? Trust cash book. book. And the amount is? 100,000. 100,000. Number eight does not end here. It goes further and says, you are instructed to purchase quoted shares for 60,000. You pay the stockbroker for 2,000 shares in ABC Limited. What do you do? You go to the trust account and you pay it 60,000. Is it available? Yes. 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 yes, it is. Yes. So before we take money, available. before we take money out of the trust account, we must satisfy ourselves that it is available. Purchased shares on behalf of White for sixty thousand. So we've credited the trust cash book. What else do we do? Debit white with under with the 60,000. With debit white. So you'll remember that every time we take out client's money, we must debit the client. The only exception is when we are investing, not so. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Right. So we are done with number eight, not so. Oh, so we are not we done. You still need to pay the stockbroker. Yes, we did so. The 60,000 was to pay the stockbroker in purchasing 2,000 shares. Oh. Do you see? Yes. It says you pay yes. the stock broker for 2000. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, guys, 2000 is not money. It doesn't have R in front of it. 60, this is the quantity of the shares you are paying. The quantity of the shares. number of shares. Not money, it's just a number. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have a break. Uh, so let's finish number nine so that we can take a break. Can we finish number nine and take a break? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why it instructs you to sell the shares? Why it instructs you to sell the shares? You receive 66,000 from the sale of the shares. What do David, you do? David, the trust, the David trust the cash book. Account. Why do you debit the trust cash book? It's money received. Because you're receiving money from the sale of the shares. you're receiving money. the client's money. money. Mm. Yes, it is the client's money. And who's your client here? Why? 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 Oh, you like Kokwana? Kokwana, Bazia. Yeah. Bazia. Yeah. yeah. So you debit the trust cash book. And your narration is white, 66,000. And then you go to your client, white's account, 
and credit the sixty six thousand. The narration, as always, will be trust cash book, and the amount is sixty six thousand. So, is it complicated? Is it is it complicated? No. Not anymore. It's very Not simple. Yet. It's very simple. No. Yeah, the way you are, you are explaining it. Yeah. yeah. Simplifying it. Profit. Right. So quickly, quickly, when they say, okay, fine, A we dealt with. Né? You see, A says record all the above transactions in your books of account. We have done it. We were busy with it. Not so. Yes. B says, yes. B says, extract a list of trust balances as required by the LPC rules. Do you know what you do here? No. You simply go to your client's accounts in trust and check the balances there. For example, in green, what do you have there under green? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. It's two hundred thousand minus thirty thousand. Do you see? Yes. Yes. So, so your list of trust creditors. It's not a difficult thing. You can simply say list of trust creditors. And you say one green. does green have? 170. 170. Then you go to the second one. Who else do you have as a client? Mrs. Pachesa. Do you see? How much do that, does this client have? The credit side has 350 and 100,000. Do you see? 10. So it's 450 minus 40,000. Do you see? Yes. Then you go there, you write, Mrs. Pachisa has X amount. This is the list. And then you go to various lines. How much? 700,000. And then you go to white in trust. The same thing, 166 minus 60. How much? 100,000. 106,000. 106,000. Right. right. This is the total that they know themselves to be having in your trust account. Not so. Yes. There, yes so. From there, you also account for the investments that you are running. Tell us how much you have in investment A, how much you have in investment B, how much you have in investment C. Do you get it? Yes. 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 All right, when we come back, back. We, will, we will deal with the writing of fees. Before we go, Prof. Prof. Yes. Uh, can I from can the I, investment I account? Before. before we go, Prof. Uh, from the yes. investment, which money uh, 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 do we now have to look at when we are checking the balance? Uh, is it the debit side or the credit side from the investment? It will be the debit side minus the credit side. Take an example oh, okay. of investment in bank uh, A. Let's start from the beginning. Bank A is, uh, do you see? Debit side is 200,000, do you see? Yes. Minus the credit side being 50,000. So how much do you have in this investment account? 150,000, not so. Yeah. So, so effectively, what this will mean is that 
if you go to our list again, ne? effectively, what it means is that the total amount that Not green off. has is yes. Hello. C can you allow me to tackle one question, finish it, and then we go to another? Yes. Okay. Because this effectively, effectively, what this means is that green has hundred and seventy thousand with us. He's a tennis. But if we can go to the trust account, we will not find this 150,000. Do you get me? We will not find this 170,000. Why will we not find this 170,000? Because we invested 150,000. Do you get me? Yes. 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 Got investment in bank A. There is 150,000 there. Do you see it? Yes. Right. So it means green in trust has, if we were to split it, if we were to split or give a full account in respect of green, we would say the total that green has is 170. 170 and then total is 170. If you like, you can start with the splitting before coming to the total. And then section 864. Is 150. And then, ugh, what am I doing now? Okay. And in the um, trust cash book, you have how much? 20,000. So this is what you have. If you like, you can simply take this one here and bring this one up there. Uh, Prof. Yes. Yes, just a quick question. Uh, yes. When it comes to the balances, um, is it fine if we start by the trust um, the, the ledgers and the trust account before we go to the investments. My question is, we deal with the balances in their respectful, uh, respective ledgers, and then after we're done with that, we go to investments. Yes, that is what we were doing. Okay. Yes. Okay, Prof, just on yes. that one. Eh? Yes. I, I, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I just need to understand, will it be wrong, say for instance, uh, for uh, white, where we are seeing now, there's, there's a balance of 106, will yeah. it be wrong if I indicate from that ledger? You can, you, when you balance, you can balance this ledger by simply yes. saying balance. Yes. 106, like this. Is this what you want? Yes, 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 yeah, yes. That's what I, I was yes, trying to but say. But remember that when you've been asked to <coughs> draw a list of trust creditors, it must also appear here. Okay, all right, okay. Do you follow? Okay. Let's say you okay. deal with um, uh, white as the second client, for example, and you say white. And how much does white have? Uh, 106,000. Do you follow? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Okay, no, it's fine. I understand. Okay, all right. Then you list all of them. You, you, you indicate how much they have in the trust account. And then if you like, you can 
um, do the Section 86 investment separately. You can start with the clients as they appear in the ledgers and then later deal with the um, investments. So while we are on that one, Prof, the yes. trust cash book, do we do we list the, 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 the balance as well? Or no? Yes, the trust cash book for you to see how much in total um, yes. you have. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Th thank you, Van Wakul. Thank you, Van Wakul. So what you're saying, Prof, is that you can't just write 106 and leave it as is. You need to show how you got the 106. No, no, you can write it like this. It's fine. Like I've done here, white 106. Okay. With, with green, the reason I wrote a long story here is because his money is making rounds. Otherwise, you could have simply said 170. But but the truth is that if you can want this 170 in the trust account, you will not find it, will you? In respect of green, if no. you go to the trust account to look for this 170, you will not find it. Why will you not find it? Because we invested. Because, because you invested. And how much did you invest? 150. So in the trust account, you only have uh, 20,000. And this came about when you withdrew 50,000 from the investment account and paid council 30,000. Do you remember? Yes. Yes. But if you do the calculation from there and then bring it here, I think for, okay, for me, I find it easier to do the calculation there on the trust and then just bring the total number here. Of course, we are interested in the total here. This is why we say a list, list, list. You simply write a list. You list. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Um, so final question. I just wanted to confirm with the with the LPFF uh, um, account there, is that an interest? Yes, it's in trust. You oh, can't have it okay. in business. All right. You can't have okay. the LPFF in business unless they are your client. Okay. Ordinarily, sir, they'll be sir, in trust. Yes. All right, thank you, sir. So, uh, yeah, maybe one question from me. You indicated earlier that the um, trust account must not be negative. Now, I yes. just want to check uh, in that regard, uh, because uh, you this money obviously is... In a, in a bank account, in a bank account, um, and I just want to check: Do banks um, uh, 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 charge money in the trust account? And if so, does it not it, it then affect um, the amount to be negative? How do we deal with that situation? On opening your trust account, please make arrangements with your bank to debit your business account with your trust account charges. So once you have that arrangement with your bank, the bank will on a monthly basis debit the trust account charges from your business account so that your trust account always stays positive. Thank you very much. Info, You're welcome. Uh, prof. Info, come on. Right, let us break. We are back at uh, half past uh, seven. And so what do we do with the... With the fees general and then introduce correspondent accounts. We will be what do we do with the... discussing how to write FF. fees. And we only yeah. Prof, are we not going to deal with... Look, see, can we go on a break, colleagues? Please go on a break. Go on a break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Can you mute, mute your systems, fellow students?
Ben moi, comment t'en utilises Johanna Nyembe, mute, please. Just wash. Just, just, just clean. It's okay. It's gone. Oh. <laughs> just wash. No, they wash. They wash water now. So, Hana Nyembe. It's your shoe. You're scared of her because this is a fly. It's a fly. Daddy, come kill your friend. Give me chili sauce there and eat your food. This food is getting cold. Once we come there, I don't know why you're opening it. Can you mute your systems, colleagues? Can you mute? It's only one person, Johanna Nyembe. Johanna, Johanna.
Ja. Ah. 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 Is there is there no way that Zuki so can mute these people? Hey, it's really frustrating and annoying. Hey, they're making a noise. Thank you. Zuki so is she not there? Did you say it? Shut it, Joe. Kid. Mommy, I can't do say the date. What kind of side? And it's even better than the other. I did. Run your duties. Evening. Johanna. Take me to bank. Take me to bank. Back. Yeah. Uh, Miss Joanna Nyambe, could we please ask you to mute yourself, please? I think she's away from her device. She cannot hear us. And we're supposed to be monitoring when people are doing this, eh? Exactly my question. I mean, where are the administrators? She's we just need to now. address. She's muted now. Oh. We just need to address this thing before the start of the second session of the class to fellow students that they need to really be strict about this. Yeah, but but I think Vaza uh, Zuki so he must assist us. Um, if um, somebody continues to um, speak or you know some noise on the background, I think Vaza Zuki must uh, come in to to mute that person because otherwise it's it's unfair for the rest of uh, everybody. So please, uh, Vaza Zuki, so assist us in this regard. I suppose you do have rights to decide who can, you know, speak or be muted. Thank you. And there is Thank not even, there is not even a decency from the fellow uh, students to even apologize when she came to mute her. She just did it and then left. Right, let us uh, proceed. 
I take it everyone is back and ready to proceed. We are back and ready. Yes. Thank you. Um, I want us to to deal with fees. You you will remember that we have been doing so many things, so many things for the client or clients, but we never dealt with instances where we deal with what we are entitled to or with what belongs to us. Let us say that in our example of last night, Tata, mm -hmm. we render services. Let us say the type of service we render is that of issuing summons. We issue summons and charge our client Tadana 3,000 rand. When we charge fees or when we render services and charge fees of 3,000 as in our case now, does it mean that at the time of charging these fees, we are receiving money or we are taking money out? We are receiving money. Are we receiving money or are we taking money out? We are taking money out, Prof. We haven't, we haven't received any money yet as yet. We only receive the money when the client pays us. Yes. 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 So is the client paying us now? No. No, no. we are charging. We are charging the client. Oh. Is money going out? Yes. How is money going out and where is it going if there's any money going the, out? The money is going out of the trust account into our business account. Okay, any other attempt? Right. So here, I, I, I don't want to go out of the trust account. If there was a prepayment that was placed into the trust account, and if we charge for a fee, we will then do a transfer from the trust account into the business account. Yeah, but the question is, at the moment when it is said that we are rendering a service, we are issuing a summons and charging a fee of 3,000. Does that mean we are receiving money or does it mean we are taking money out or is it none of the above? It's taking none of the above. It's none of the above. Excuse me, sir. We can't hear. There's terrible noise in the background. That's muffling your John. So you say it's none of the above. It's none yes. of the above. Yes. It's none of the above. And I agree with you. It is none of the above. Why do we say that it is none of the above? Because when we render a service, when we draft summons and go to court to issue the summons and come back to the office to write a fee, 
that does not mean that the client is paying us at that moment. It also does not mean that money is going out of any of our accounts. What we are doing here instead is that we are showing how much we charge for this specific service that we are rendering. We are demonstrating how much we are entitled to for this specific work that we are doing. We are not receiving any money, neither is any money going out. This therefore is not a cash transaction. It is a non-cash transaction. We will not record in our cash books because our cash books deal only with cash transactions. This is a non-cash transaction. And because it is a non-cash transaction, it must be dealt with on a journal. Journals are books used to record non-cash transactions. Journals are books used to record non-cash transactions. The relevant journal that we are going to use here is called fees journal. The relevant journal we will use is called fees journal. It deals only with the recording of fees. It deals only with the recording of fees. This is how a fees journal will look like. This is how a fees journal will look like. When you write your fees, you will start with the names of your client. In our case, we have identified Tatan as the client on whose account we are writing fees. So just below where we have written fees journal, we will write Tatana. And below Tatana, we will write fees. And we said that our fee for issuing summons is 3,000. The principle is that when you write fees, you must always credit the fees and debit your client. When you write fees, you must always credit the fees and debit your client. How will we record this? 
we will, in line with the principle, credit fees. We will record this on the extreme right to show that it is a credit entry. And then we will debit our client by recording on the left to show that it is a debit. And then below, we will explain what this is for. And what is this for? It's for summons. So we will say summons fees. We will say summons fees. So you will see that on the fees journal, we have recorded the names of our client being Tatana. And below Tatana, we recorded fees. And because the principle says when we write fees, we must always credit the fees and debit the client. We credited the fees with 3,000 and debited our client with the same amount, 3,000. We narrated the transaction by saying summons fees, summons fees. Summons fees. Another principle says that every time you make use of a journal, you must also post two ledgers. Every time you make use of a journal, you must also post two ledgers. What this means is that after recording on a journal, you must ensure that the transactions which appear on a journal also appear on T accounts. They must appear on T accounts also. And when they appear in T accounts, they must appear in the same way that they have appeared in the journal. What does this mean? It means that when you post transactions from a journal to ledgers, you do not have to change anything. What is debited must remain debited, and what is credited must remain credited. What is debited remains debited, and what is credited remains credited. Now tell me, which accounts or which ledgers are we going to post to between trust and business? It's business ledgers. Sir. Business ledgers, I agree with you. But why business ledgers and not trust ledgers? Because this is fees. Because it's not cash. This is going to be our money. It's our money and not the bond. Spends money. Practice right. money. This is because we are dealing with what is due to us. We are dealing with what is due to us. We are dealing with what belongs to us. So we will post to business set of books or to business ledgers, which we do not have at the moment. 
So it means we must open business ledgers. We must open business ledgers. Uh, so say as we open business ledgers, please repeat the second uh, principle about uh, ledgers. Principle about ledgers. Yeah, I think you 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 mentioned uh, the first principle as um, let me see here uh, as indicating that. Um, uh, I can help. We, we uh, the second principle yeah. is what what's debited remains debited, and what's credited remains credited, <laughs> even if the posting to the ledger. So it remains as is. What's on the journal will remain as as, as is on the ledger. When you post transactions from a journal to ledgers, you do not change anything. What is debited remains debited, and what is credited remains credited. So we'll have our business cash book here. Although we are not going to use it uh, immediately, we open it so that when we want to use it, um, we may have it readily available. In the alternative, we are opening it uh, first just so that it gives us uh, guidance that we are now busy with our business um, setup books. And we'll open an account for Tatana in business as well as an account for fees. In line with what I said earlier, that when we post transactions from a journal to ledgers, we do not change anything. What is debited remains debited, and what is credited remains credited. What do we do here? We debit 3,000 rents on the cash book. We debit that down. And our narration is fees. What else do we do? We credit fees. Credit fees. We credit fees. Three thousand, and our narration is that down oh. on a fee account. So this way, we have written fees. What if? We were registered for that. We need to include the that. Uh? We're going to add to include the that. We're going to add the that. We're going to add the vet to the fees. We would add vet to the fees, not so. Yes. And how would it play out? Would we start at the fees journal? Yes. And what is the current rate of that? It's 15%. It's 15%. How yes. would we have recorded on the fees journal? Three thousand times fifteen over one one five. If I'm not mistaken. 
So the fees and the VAT would be credited, not so. Yes. The fees and the VAT would be credited and our client would be debited with both the fees and the VAT. This is how this would look like. We would credit fees with 3,000 and then below fees we would write VAT and credit it. The current rate of VAT is 15%. And this is what is called VAT output. This is the VAT that we are charging. We would say 3000 multiplied by 15 divided by 100 in order for us to get our VAT. 3000 multiplied by 15 divided by 100. What do you get there? 450. 450, sir. So we would credit VAT with 450. Do you see? Yes, sir. Yes. And then from here we would say 3000 plus 450. What total would we get? 3,400. So in total, for the summons that we have issued, Tatana owes us 3,450. Then we would debit Tatana with 3,450. Do you follow? Yes. Our narration also would say, Summons fees plus VAT at 15%. Do we all get this? This is if yes. we are registered for VAT. Summons fees plus VAT at 15%. So when we credit the fees there at 3,000, we don't include the, the VAT. The VAT is below here. Do you see the VAT? Oh, oh yes, yes. OK. Right. And then when posting to ledgers, the situation would change, not so. Yes. How much would you have debited Tatana with? 3,450. And then you would have an extra account, not so. Yes. 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 Red. Red. Red output. Would you debit this or credit this? Credit. Credit. And your narration would be? Tatana. How much? 450. 450. 450. So do you see that you are able to write fees and VAT? You are able to write fees and VAT now.
Uh, sorry, sir, just to take you back a little bit, ne? Yes. Um, earlier, I asked about the principle in regard to recording um, in a first journal as well as the ledger. Now, the response I got was um, if you record uh, or the, the fees that are recorded or that are credited, uh, they are also credited on, on, on the ledger. Uh, and that applies when it comes to debiting. But in terms of the example we are dealing with here, I see uh, Tatana in business. We have um, we've, we've recorded, uh, we have debited three, four, five, zero, and then the other. And the narration is, uh, also here on Tatana in business will change. It will now be fees plus vet, not so. Yeah, yes. that, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, so my, 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 my question is following that principle, because I thought that if we say, um, if, if, if you record uh, the fees on the credit side, even on the ledger, you also record on the credit side. I thought that is how I was, I was, I was informed earlier. But that is what we are doing. Like, that is what we are doing, sir. Let's go back to the fees journal. Okay. What do you see on the fees journal? Is the fee account debited or credited? Oh, okay, okay. No, I, I, I think it's because I saw the other one, the the, the Tatana in uh, what do you call it? I think. But no, the not this one, but this. The fees and the vet must be credited always. And okay. the client must be debited, not so. Yes. And when we post from the journal to ledgers, we must not change anything. What is debited remains yes. debited, and what is credited remains credited. Tatana in business is debited on the fees journal. And here we have Tatana debited with 3450. Do you see? And our narration here is that um, it's fees plus VAT. And the fees account was credited on the journal, and it is also credited on the ledger here. Do you see? The same goes for VAT. It's credited both in the journal and in the Ledger. Do you follow, sir? I, um, I think uh, my my yeah, maybe I'm lost uh, because like like okay, just just go up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. I what I see on the screen. Eh? Yes. Uh, so the data in business yes and then and then um the fees plus vet uh totaling three four five zero is recorded on the left side yes while the fees as well as the vet output is recorded yes. on the right hand side i think that is where my my confusion it's it's coming from why why is there a confusion i think it's it's on the basis of the principle that if um, uh, the fees on on the on the on the general side are recorded on the left everything else must be mm -mm. Recorded on the left and if it's, mm -mm. okay mm -mm. look at the general where are the fees okay On the right side. On the on the on. The, okay. On the right, right. Side. Okay. So the, 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 the okay. So the three thousand and the four fifty. Yes. On the on the right. Okay. I see that. Do you see that there is no difference between the general and the letter? I think the confusion yeah, I, is. I, I see now. I I think yeah. I see now. I see now. Okay. Can I clarify so, something? So do you see that there should be no confusion here? 
we, we said that when we post from a journal to ledgers, what is debited must remain debited. Do you see Tatana? Yes. On the journal. So Tatana is on, yeah, it's on the Is it debited side, yes. or credited? It's, um, it's debited. Right. So we expect it to be debited even on the journal, or on the ledger, not so? Yes. Now let's go to the ledger. What's happening here? Is it debited or credited? Uh, it's, it's debited. Yeah, I think. I think. Yeah. Now, now, now I fall. I think I, 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 I missed um, one part. Yeah, I'm following. Thank you. I'm following right. now. Okay. Ask. Uh, Can I ask? Yes, you may. Why are you not? Um, I, I understand this is for attorneys, but in practice, do attorneys also attend to their to to doing these accounts? Because I even see um, it does not follow the the principle of uh, asset. Because now I would have said. That Dana in business is a debtor, right? And then I would have said fees is income. And then yes. the principle that we know in accounting is fees increase on the credit side. And then the data, which is an asset, would increase on the debit side, which is very simple. But I see how it's done here that a, an, a, an attorney wouldn't really master that principle because it's not really being taught here. So how no, would they manage the that's, accounts? That's exactly practice? the same thing, Manana. Okay. Look at the ledgers here. Do you see the ledgers? Yes, I can see. What 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 is this um, display yeah. different from what it, you are saying? It, no, I understand it, but I'm just asking from. Uh, someone who's done accounting, right? And I'm asking that if the lawyers had to maintain their own accounts, would they really not be confused? Because I, I think that they, they're they learning it, but not in so much, uh, like, you know, the normal way of learning it. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. No, you will not make sense if you say the normal way. The normal way is following accounting, you know, how we always yeah. do it. You know? Yeah, but this is accounting that we're following. Listen, okay. you say that, you say that Tatana is a business data, not so. Yes. I think by, the difference is the narration. By recording on the debit side, is this not saying that Tatana is a business data? Many assets. David's data. Again, it's the data that owes us fees. Yeah, I think the difference is the narration in yes, accounting. It's more of yes. a general narration to yes. say that is here. We are more specific. We specify, that this and I said it specified. even last night. I said it even last night. Okay, look at fees. You said fees um, will be an income, not so, and that will increase on the credit side. And what have we done here? Have we not credited? Yes, I understand and I agree. Accounting but with I'm, a credit just, bank. Yeah. No, it will, it's exactly the same with what you're doing here. But I'm saying, I'm looking at this in practice, ne? and I'm I'm thinking that someone who's just doing this from 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 an attorney's side would they really be able to follow through on their own to say this is data, this is assets, this is because those things are not being taught here. No, these things are being taught here. You are in this class as an attorney, not so. <laughs> and we are teaching you that, aren't we? I don't think you get me, but it's fine. It's fine. You, you are saying an account, an attorney having to be taught the the way a an accountant or an ordinary accountant would be taught. Yes. No, but an attorney is not going to handle files of so many other uh, people or will not be doing books for people. An attorney will be doing books for his practice. Not so. 
An attorney is not an accountant. He is not running the business of an accountant. An attorney is dealing with his own books in practice. And this is what an attorney will do in practice. Uh, and this is why the course is taught to you. So that when you go to practice, you have it. Uh, prof? Prof, prof yes. uh, can I prof. button? I am an accountant and um, I'm here trying learning law. But you are teaching basic principles of bookkeeping, which is what every person should learn. And you're doing it in a very simplified manner to make us all understand it more clearly. And yes. I appreciate the way you're teaching us. You're making it very clear to us how to understand. Um, you know, it's basic. It's not complicated. We haven't got to that stage yet. So we mustn't complicate ourselves in our minds. Exactly. We must just be saying and stick to debit and credits and listen to you. Yes. And we won't forget anything. You will not forget. Because you must also understand that we are not training accountants here. We are training lawyers so that they have an understanding of the basic principles. And that is why I'm not even saying to you assets, liabilities, income and expenses. They, these ones increase on the debit. These ones on the credit, because I know these confuse many. But if you speak money and the way we present it, it makes it easier for for an attorney to follow. And in fact, it should also be way easier for, for somebody with accounting background. It should be able to be clear for you also. Uh, prof. Yes. Yes, I'm just asking. Thank prof, you, Prof. Uh, Thank you, Prof. Yes, Prof. So I'm just asking, uh, just you give us an exception for today, uh, that for the remainder of this lecture, you take questions at the end and you try and cover as much as you can. Just so that we can move, yes. Yes, yeah, so okay. that we can All right, move. thank you. Yes. It's okay. But but at the same time, the problem with that strategy is, is that you move and somebody are left behind. And at the end, yes. when they ask questions, their questions don't even make sense. If, bro, if, it, was, for tonight, bro. if it was a different course, I would I would accede to that. But with bookkeeping, it's easy for a person to get lost. But it's okay. Let's see how we can we can progress. Okay, thanks, bro. That's okay. All right. Let's say let's say your client that down. Thank you. Thank you. Asks for a discount. And for some reason you allow it and you give them 5% discount. I am not saying you'll be giving discounts in your practice, but I just want to illustrate a point in your books of account. Let us say you, you give your client a discount of 5% on the fees and the VAT you have written. How would you record this in your books of account? You will you will credit your fees or debit your fees with the five percent discount. Right. So you would go back to the fees journal. You would go back to the fees journal, and what you will do in the fees journal is that. Sorry, Prof. Can you please repeat your question? The question is. You agreed with your client that you will give him 5% discount on the fees you write. And we ask how you will go about recording this discount. And I say that you will go to the fees journal and record this discount. How will you record it on the fees journal? you will do the opposite of what you did when you were writing fees. You will do the opposite of what you did when you were writing fees. And what is that opposite? What was credited will now be debited. 
and what was debited will now be credited. So this is how you will record it. You will start with your fees and then followed by VET and your client that done. And then you will determine 5% of the fees. How much is it? 173. How much? 173. Of 2,000. Uh, of 5% of the fees. 5% of 3,000, in other words. Oh, 3,000. Oh, not, not that all amount. It's 150 rand. It's 150. So you debit it. Follow. When you first wrote the fees, you credited. Do you remember? So when you give a discount, you will debit. Then you go for VAT. What is 5% of the VAT? It's 15. <laughs> What is 5% of the VAT? 67.50. 450. 5% so of 450. Didn't, didn't get the 150. 22 rand 50. How much? 22.5. 22.5. 22.5. Does everybody get this? Yes, we do get uh, 22.5. Twenty-two fifty. Twenty-two fifty. Then you will debit twenty-two fifty. Do you follow? And then you say, in total, how much discount have you given? One one seven two. One seven two point. Five zero. So this is the total discount you have given. So you will credit it. You will credit your client with it, and your narration will simply be five percent discount on someone's fees plus that at fifteen percent. 5% discount on someone's fees plus VAT at 15%. Do you get this? Yes. Yes, we do. Sorry, sir, I was kicked out. I don't know what I'm going to be. Yes. But why are we not using a cash book in this? We said it's a non-cash transaction. We are not receiving any money. Oh. We only use a cash book when we have a flow of cash. When there's either money coming in or going out. There's no cash. Understood, Understood Prof. Thank you. I repeat the principles uh, I was kicked out. Uh, from where, sir? After we finish talking about uh, the recording of the journal, which comes, uh, which means that the debit must be the debit side on the ledger and the credit must be on the credit side. Then the next step, which you followed. That's not too far back. Mm -hmm. Right. When we give a discount, we do the opposite of what we did when we were writing fees. 
we will go back to the fees journal and reverse the fees by the rate at which we are giving a discount. And in our case here, it's 5%. We will debit the fees and the VAT because they were credited when writing fees. And we will credit the client because the client is getting the discount. Then we will start by recording fees followed by VAT and followed by our client. We then determine 5% of the fees and we debit. In our case, 5% of 3,000 is 150. So we debit 50. 150. And then we determine 5% of VAT. Our VAT was 450 or is 450. We determine 5% of 450. And it is 22.50. We debit the VAT. And then we go to Tatana we determine 5% of the total fees and VAT being 3,450. And we find that 5% of 3,450 is 172.50. And we credit it. Our narration here is 5% discount on someone's fees plus VAT at 15%. Thank you, sir. And then we remember that every time we make use of a journal, we must also post to ledgers. So we post to ledgers. And we agreed earlier that from a fees journal, we will post to business ledgers. So we will go to our business ledgers to post. Fees, what do we do? Do we debit or credit? We debit. Remember that when we post transactions from a journal to ledgers, we don't change anything. Yeah. What was debited remains debited and what was credited remains credited. Debit. Do we debit uh, fees or do we credit fees? Credit fees. fees. Debit no, no, on giving a discount, we what do we do? Do we, we debit, debit or credit? Yeah, we debit. We debit. We debit. We debit. We debit. We debit. Because debit. The debit. initial fee was credited, not so. Mm. How much are we debiting? 150. 150. Can we go to VAT now? Yes. On yes. VAT, do we debit or do we credit? We debit. We debit. We debit. We debit. And our narration is? Ta -ta. Ta -ta. Not so. Okay. How much are we debiting? 22. 22.50. 22.50. Yes. Tatana in business, do we debit or credit? Credit. Credit. Credit how much? Credit. 172. And our narration will be? Discount. Discount. 5% discount. How much? How much? 
172,5. Yes. So this way we have given a discount. It's month end and we want to get paid for the work we have done. Do we know how much Tatana owes us? Yes. Do we? Yes. Oh, yeah, I know. think so. 3.277.5. How much? Three, I two, think seven, uh, seven point five. Three two seven seven fifty. Right. We have rendered services, and our client Tatana gave us a deposit before we started with his work. And we want to transfer from the trust account to the business account, what is due to us. Before we transfer, there are two things we need to do. Number one, firstly, determine how much is due to you. Determine how much is due to you. You determine this by going to your client's account in business and balancing it there. Here is our client's account in business. On the debit side, we find our debt. We find what is due, but on the credit side, there is a discount we gave. Do you see? It's so we will say 3,450, which appears on the debit side, minus 172.50, which is what appears on the credit side. What we get there is what is due to us. How much are you getting? Three thousand two hundred and seventy-seven. Three two seven seven point five. Yes. So you say three four five zero minus one seven two point five zero, and what you are getting is three two seven seven point five zero. So this is what is due to you. But you do not end there. You note it. And then you do number two. And what is number two? Number two is you check if there are sufficient funds in the trust account to cover what is due to you. And how do you do this? You go to the specific client's account in trust. Who's our client here? Does our client have funds in trust? Which funds are sufficient to cover what is due to us? Yes, he does. He does. Yes. Right. So we can proceed with the transfer. Why do we do this? Why must we do these checks before we transfer? Why don't we just um, transfer right away? We the trust must we not be deficit. Yes. We avoid a deficit. We avoid a deficit. So we must now take funds from the trust account to the business account. And the vehicle that helps us do that is called a transfer journal.
when you are transferring funds from the trust account to the business account and vice versa, you make use of this important book called Transfer Journal. And then ask yourself this. Ask yourself this. From whose account in trust to whose account in business are you transferring funds? From the client. Tatana to my business account. So you are taking from Tatana's account in trust to Tatana's account in business. Remember that Tatana is a trust creditor and a business debtor. Do you follow? Tatana yes. has funds in your trust account and this makes him a trust creditor. Tatana at the same time owes you money in the business account and that makes him a business debtor. So you must take funds from his account in trust to his account in business to settle the debt that Tatana owes you. And you have said to me that Tatana actually owes you three thousand two hundred and seventy seven rand fifty if we are in South Africa. Two seven seven point five zero. So you are taking these to uh, settle the debt that he has in business. And then your narration here will be transfer of fees plus that. If you like, you can also say at 15%. Mm. To be very honest, I didn't go with um, any kind of self experience. I was just going to do something. And what I can do for you, my dear, is Hello, Prof. Are you still there? Are you happy with the transfer journal? Yes. That's why it is. Yes. Yes. We have yes. just made you say, yes, no. do you see? That's why it is. From a journal, where do we go? We go Business to the ledger. Schedule. We, go we to post the ledger. to ledgers, not so. Yes. And remember that when we post from a journal to ledgers, we do not change anything. What is debited remains debited. And what is credited remains credited, not so. So Tatana in trust will have to be debited. Do you see? And our narration here will be Tatana in business. In business. Because this is where it is going. And how much is it? 3277.50. Tatana in trust, we debit. And our narration will be Tatana in business. And then we go to Tatana in business to credit so that we finalize the transaction as it appears on the journal. So Tatana in business, we credit and our narration will be 
Tatana in trust. The amount is three two seven seven point five zero. You will also see that Tatana in business now bears the same value on both the debit and the credit sides. Not so. Yes, sir. Because 3277.50 plus 172.50 will give you 3450. So you can proceed to close this account. But you still have not transferred. You still have not finalized the transfer process. You have recorded, yes, in your books of account, the fact that you are moving value from your client in trust to his account in business. But the business cash book has not received anything. Do you see that it is still empty? Yes, it's empty. Right. So what do you do it's to make sure that it gets money? You go to, to you go to the trust cash book. You credit the trust cash book. You credit, you say, you credit the trust cash book and you yes. give it the business cash book. Yes. So you will say transfer to business cash book. Transfer to business cash book. Three two. Seven seven point five zero. Do you follow? Yes, sir. And then you go to the business cash book and debit and debit. And your narration will simply be X trust cash book. The sum of 3277.50. X trust cash book 3277.50. This simply means that this transfer comes from the trust cash book. Simply means. This transfer comes from the trust cash book. So this way you you have transferred. There is now money in your trust account. There's now money. I mean, in your business account, you have been paid for the service that you have rendered. You've been paid for the service that you have rendered. You've been Can able to write this. Yes. Yes, Manan. Um, I just want to ask you, what is the narration in the um, trust cash book and the business cash book for the transfer? In the Sorry. trust cash book, the narration is transferred to business cash book. We record it on the credit side of the trust cash book and our narration is transfer to business cash book. Uh, may okay. I kindly ask? And on the uh, business cash book, we debited and the narration is X trust cash book. X trust cash book. All right. Uh, uh, sir, just one quick one. Are we not yes. supposed to indicate X uh, trust cash book Tatana so that we are able to distinguish it? Uh, from uh, other clients who, 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 who we may transfer from? 
What distinguished this transaction is the transfer journal and the posting from the transfer journal. This transaction, do you see? Okay. Yes. May I ask when are we actually getting the fees to be transferred from the trust bank account itself uh, to the business bank itself from the bank for the physical monies adopt on. adopt a practice of transferring at least once per month preferably at the end of the month <coughs> so that you know that you have a single transfer made from the trust account to the business account avoid unnecessary up and down between your business and trust uh, prof yes sir yeah i just have two questions here the first one is what do we do with time uh, what do we do with with time because it's 20 to 9 and then um the second question is what's the narration on the business uh, tatana in business uh, in the business what is the narration in business what's the narration uh, for for, Where? for the tatana in business account for tatana in business we said tatana in trust Okay, thank you, Prof. And then seeing that the time now is 2041. It's fine. The time we are not going to record in our books of account. We will simply <laughs> attend the class. We are able to Fundo, if you want to leave, then exit. Like, remember <laughs> that. Remember yeah. that we said that in our cash books, we only deal with cash transactions. Non cash transactions will be dealt with on journals. So it's not necessary to record the time. Thank All you. Right, so tomorrow, okay. tomorrow we will deal with correspondent accounts. We will deal with correspondent accounts. You may uh, go and prepare on those and if possible also attempt attempt to answer the questions that were shared with you and i am confident that you are actually you are actually at this stage able to deal with questions on correspondent accounts and on conveyancing transactions i made this introduction take longer deliberately because I know that once we are done with it and you master it, you will be able to deal with whatever question that comes, be it correspondent accounts or um, conveyancing transactions, you will be able to answer those. So please make an attempt on your own. You can take um, one question on receiving instructions and one question on giving instructions. Go through those, work them out, and let us discuss them tomorrow when we meet again. Sorry, Prof, can I please ask, are you going to share this recording? Um, check with uh, Zuki Swan. Even the word mm -hmm. document that he is working on, if it's possible. I have no problem sharing what I am working on at all. I am doing this for you anyway. Thank yeah, we you. Made what Thank you. you. Yes, Thank not you. a problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. The class is Thank you. Turned. Thank you. Good night.
Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Much appreciated.